everyone and welcome to Yoshi 1 Kenobi's Gruul Gods Tribal deck. In this deck we aim to make use of the World Tree, one of the cool cards from Kaldaheim that I haven't played yet. And so what this card does is it transforms all your lands into lands of all colors, as long as you have 6 or more lands. And then if you have 11 lands in play, or if you get to play double white, double blue, double black, double red, double green, you get to sacrifice the world tree and summon any number of guard cards from your library onto the battlefield. Now this typically goes well into five color decks because it fixes your color and then you get the gods of all the colors. But one of the problems is that the, the god cards from Theros Beyond Death requires devotion in order to be turned into creatures. So we're going to focus the deck on two colors. We're going to be focusing on the Gruul Gods, and this is going to allow us to have Nylia activated. We're going to have Clotus activated, and maybe even Perfros activated, with Perfros giving haste to all the gods that we're summoning from our deck. And we, we just need to summon enough gods to close the game. We don't need to summon 25 creatures. We're trying to make this deck a bit more reliable, and reducing it to two colors is going to do well. Go oh, with two colors. What's the trick? Well, one of the tricks is that Giganta, the Wellspring, can tap for five colors of mana. And this mana can't be spelled to pay generic mana cost. But that's great, because the World Tree requires exact mana cost. So with Giganta on turn five, we get to activate World Tree on turn six by tapping five other lands in Giganta and special summoning from our library as many gods as there are left. So, what's our list? Well, it's basically just god cards and Giganta. So, Perfros, Toralf, Nylia, Kolvori, Clotus, Essica, Jorn, and Bergi. Uh, we're playing more Kolvoris, Essicas, and Bergi because you, they, they actually do something on the board without the combo. Uh, Kolvori, you get to play as the Ring Heart Crest to ramp a little bit. Essica allows you to ramp because it turns your gods into mana dorks with Vigilance. And Bergi can also be played as the Horn of Bounty in a pinch to try and get access to more cards, increase your devotion to red. In terms of other cards, well, we need to survive because the god cards aren't the cheapest of creatures and we need board presence, especially with mono red and mono white rampant on the ladder. So we're playing two Scorching Dragon Fires, three Storm's Rat, and four Almond of the Forge. Almond of the Forge, again, because we want our devotion to red to improve a little bit. Because if we don't have the Toralf in our deck, we won't have enough devotion for Perforos out of the box. And then we're playing four Path to the World Tree because it's on flavor. And with the World Tree, or with Giganta, you get to activate the passive ability. So first off, just fetching a land for two mana is okay, it's not bad. But the ability to gain two life, draw two cards, opponent loses two life, you deal two damage to a creature, and put a 2-2 bear is very powerful. It's stronger than Doom Foretold's ability when it resolves. And so we'll play the bat to the World Tree to ensure we have that land count to activate the World Tree. We're also playing Tyrant Sanctum as part of our lands because it makes god cards indestructible, and that's basically all we're playing. So now, let's see this deck in action with some games and get the awesomeness going. We're waiting for an opponent with Gruul's God's Tribal, and the Killer Buzz has just appeared. Well, let's hope that you're not gonna kill our Buzz, because we have a pretty decent opening hand. We have a World Tree, and we have our path to cast the world tree. So I'll open up with the world tree. We also have Essica, which we can cast in god mode if we want. Almond of the Forge, always a welcome addition. So now what do we do? Do we want to play the Ring Heart Crest? Probably. Ramp's typically good. Although we don't really have good timing for it. We could just play the path, following the green source. And sure we hit our land drops. Let's go with the land drop plan. Baky snow covered forest. And pass the turn back. If the opponent plays a um, a hasty creature. That's more threatening than the Fervent Champion, then we'll use the Almond of the Forge. If it's just the Fervent Champion, well, Essica's a good blocker. Yeah, let's go Essica. 
You can't kill it this turn. Well, on my turn. You might be able to kill it on your turn. That's a different story. Now, Essica also produces mana of any color. Oh, opponent has a Bone Crusher Giant or Rimrock Knight. Opponent plays Anax, hardened in the forge. Alright. So we can go Perforos, which doesn't really do us any good. We can also play the Tyrite Sanctum in Colvori. This move I do like. Let's go, Colvori. And pass the turn back. Now we are in trouble to Ember Cleave, as are most decks. But for next turn, we'll have a Tyrant Sanctum as extra protection against the Sword of Doom. Yeah, the attack with everything smells, reeks the Ember Cleave. And we only have access to one red. Unfortunately. Because Kulvari has something sickness and cannot tap for the Omnic Forge. Conan kills Kulgari. Kulvari. It's not the worst of outcomes. I'll take one. Opponent gets a 1 1. And we get another Omnic of the Forge. Alright. So I'll have to play a tap land. Giganta. Hello, top deck. Alright, we'll just sit back. Oh, you have a free attack. Feel the pain of Essica. Alright. So we have two Almonds of the Forge that we can cast, thanks to Essica's red mana. Bone Crusher Giant is fine. So is that Fireblade Charger. One attacks with Anax and the token. Not sure why you're attacking with the token. Nice, you have a good idea. You probably have. A tree damage spell. I think I have to kill Anax here. It's too much damage. Doesn't look like our opponent has a trick. So maybe we'll just save all the damage this turn. And we do! Alright. Second copy of the world tree. Giganta the Wellspring. And we just need to survive one more turn. If we survive this turn, we get to crack open our world tree. Yeah, all our lands produce one mana of any color. We have to block here. One, two, three, four. Ember Cleave tramples for six. I don't think it can kill us. But we will most certainly kill you, though. I think. I haven't actually counted. But we'll find out right now. World Tree! Let's fetch all the gods in the deck. Golgari gods, assemble! And we have two almonds of the forge, which is pretty good. Jorn, Bergy, Nylia, did I miss one? No, I think that that's it. Seven God Guards, all aced, all activated. All Vigilance. Thank you, Essica. Yeah, that's right. That's how you beat Mono Red. By summoning an Armada of Gods. We are playing Gruul Gods Tribal on MTG Arena Standard against Cryptic Command.
We will keep this somewhat awkward hand. Mostly because we have a Temple of Benden and we're going second. This will allow us to cast Essica on turn 3. There's a Mana Dork. Sure. That's close enough. It's gonna find us our third land. Field of Ruin's a big problem. I don't like this one bit. On the right side we have Clotus, and Clotus is good against control-ish type decks. Especially if they throw stuff to the graveyard. Golgari control? Well, there goes Clotus. On the red side, it means we do get to play our Essica. Opponent takes out Essica, so we do not get to play Essica, but we do get to play Clotus, which is better. Alright, here we go, Clotus. Do your thing. Here, your thing is eating every card in the graveyard and dealing tons of damage, slowly draining our opponent of all their life. What on Scratch the top? I don't think Golgari has many things that exile enchantments. Is this a Sultai deck that's playing Field of Ruins? It's possible. Unlikely, but possible. I was thinking about drawing a card with Maze Mind Town. Okay, opponent passes the turn. We'll drain you for two. We will play Burgi. The god of storytelling. You get to activate that. We will play the Temple of Abandon. Tired Sanctum. That is Field of Runes Bait. Which is what we want. We want to keep our world tree safe. So that we get to activate our path to the world tree and then eventually our the world tree itself. Ending the game with an army of gods swarming the battlefield, taking down our opponent by surprise. Well it's not really surprise because world tree enters tab, so the opponent sees it coming. But the opponent can't see it coming because they can't counter it with see it, saw it coming. Because it's a land. It's kind of a lot of irony and a very complicated explanation over nothing. So instead we're going to be playing that Tyrite Sanctum. Kinda wanna cast Jorn here. One, two, three, four. Although making Burgi indestructible is also quite tempting. Yeah, opponent is going to feel the ruin, the Tyrant Sanctum. Or draw. Alright. Maybe you're waiting for an opportunity? Let's go Hearthnail. Horn of Bounty. We get red mana, with which we get to do nothing. And we'll pass the turn back. Storm's Rat's not looking its best here. I want to give our opponent the opportunity to fill the runes, the Tyrant Sanctum. It's problematic. So that we get to play our World Tree. One keeps a card on top. So Nina have two, three, four, five devotion symbols on the battlefield for Clotus.
using the tools of the god, namely the Horn of Bounty and the Path to the World Tree. Although that thing has a bear, so it might be a bears of Ligera related card. Turgrid. That is troublesome. I do not like the idea of Turgrid stealing my stuff. So maybe he storms rat. I guess I can attack with Bergy first. Yeah, let's attack with Bergy. Actually, that thing has five toughness, so. We need the opponent to block in order to storms rat. And the opponent knows about the Storm's Wrath. Horn gains life. Opponent takes the damage. So we will half nail away our, one of our Storm's Wrath. Play Temple of Abandon, because that's what we've got. Tor. That could be interesting. Now let's end the turn. Hopefully the opponent doesn't have too much sacrificial stuff. Binding the old gods. Okay. What do you destroy? Jorn? That's a wise decision. Jorn is dangerous. Sergrid hits us. I mean, I don't think that that's a sacrifice deck. That's a deck that plays Lantern as a win condition. Alright, we draw Tor. We'll exile the Storm's Rat. Draining you for two. Point and clings to dust. Negating her effect and drawing a card. Alright, if that's how you want to play it, then that's how it's gonna go. Yeah, we probably want to play Tor Alpha as Tor. We have enough mana to play the hammer, equip the hammer. Oh no, you need to pay to unattach the hammer. Never mind. You'll play the World Tree and we'll cast Thor. God of Thunder. I mean, Thoralf, God of Fury. Oh, yeah, that activates Clothis. So I have three red gods at the ready. Conan Scraz. It's even odd, odd. So Extinction Event doesn't blow us out of the water completely. It's bad, don't get me wrong, but we're not dead to it. Alright, Temple of Mavi. Opponent has four cards. Cling to dust in the graveyard. Which we will exile with Clutus if we get the chance. Opponent places a card on top. Opponent has access to 6 mana, which is enough to do pretty much anything. There's no blue, so there's no ultimatum awaiting us. That's good. I don't like being awaited by an ultimatum. Awaited. Alright. Opponent doesn't have an extinction event. Well, an extinction event would also remove Turgrid. So that's not great. 
Clutus is indestructible, so we have a fairly diverse and hard to remove board. I guess Shadow's Verdict would hurt, because their tree drops would exile these two, Turgrade would live. Yeah, you may have Thor. He was intimidating for at least a second or two. And that's what we were going after, right? So we get to activate the World Tree next turn if we want to. Gain 2 life, draw 2 card, opponent loses 2, 2 damage to one creature, create a bear. It's a fairly good deal. We find another path to the World Tree. Yes, we will exile that Queen to Dusk. Pinging you in the process. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I think we just path here. 1... Two, three, four, five. Otherwise, we discard the Storm's Wrath to Hearth now, and we see what we find. Yeah, let's let's try that. Scorching Dragon Fire and a second World Tree. Second World Tree will seal the World Tree deal. Uh, we can Scorching Dragon Fire Turgrid. Actually, we get to attack with Bergy and threaten the Scorching Dragon Fire to. Three, four, five, six with the world tree. One, two, three, four, five. Ah! So many options. Well, it begins with the Bergy attack. That one, I think, is mostly a given. So you take the damage. You. Three, six, seven. We'll activate the bat. It'll lose two. Turgrid will take the damage. You get a world tree because I sacrificed it. Kind of an odd side effect. That I didn't think about, but is it really meaningful? And then we end the turn. The opponent must kill Clotus. Oh no, the opponent has the maze mind tone. Never mind. Opponent is all good. But so are we, because we're at 22. And Clotus is a fairly good clock. As I as I look at my opponent on one life. Trying to see if there's anything in Golgari that I'm really scared of. Ugin? I am really scared of Ugin. We are still a few turns away from activating the World Tree. We have 7 plus a World Tree. Have the 8 land in hand. Also you get a Clotus World Tree, activate World Tree. Okay, so opponent is a Lantern deck. We have two attackers. Opponent only has one block. We'll take the loss of life. No questions there. Binding the old gods. Have to go after Bergy here. Which is fine. And then it's our turn. And we find Giganta. We'll exile the binding. Drain you for two. So we can cast Giganta or activate a Prismatic Bridge. So we have two three sources. We're nowhere near it. We can increase that to five with a Prismatic Bridge. Path to the World Tree gets us closer. Yeah, I think we go Prismatic Bridge. We'll play the Path to the World Tree. Ensuring that we hit our land drop next turn. Three, six, seven, eight. And no attacks with the bear. And we'll pass the turn. Opponents on three. We have the option of just simply cracking the path to the world tree. Finger opponent for two. And use Clotus to finish off the job. So the opponent must deal with those. And we have a prismatic bridge. And you shouldn't count out Prismatic Bridge. Our life total is high enough. This is a no-brainer. And we have 
two world trees. One more time and you lose. That's still a fairly fast clock. It's nine points of damage. Let me use my tome, and that is game. Path to the world tree and Clotus get there. Do you resign or do you make me go through the motions? As long as you don't rope. All right. We get Kalvori, God of Kinship. We drain you with the bindings of the old gods. And we get to activate the path to the world tree. To drain you for the remaining amount. Not that it really mattered, because Clotus and the bear are lethal. And that's how you do it. Using the Gruul Gods. We are playing Gruul Golgari Gods on MTG Arena Standard. Our opponent is Coral. Or Cora number one. Although that's probably an L. We're gonna keep this, as we have removal, a path to the world tree, enough lands, and a perforos. Let's open up with the Temple of Abandon. Yeah, sure. It's a creature. Or an artifact. Which is it? It's both. It's neither. Opponent plays an Alsade of Life's Bounty. Hello to you too, opponent. Let's open up the path to that world tree. Fetching a green source. A snow covered forest. Opponent swings for one, we will take it. Take the opportunity to play the world tree. Passing the turn back. Keeping Almond of the Forge up. Do you want to cast it? Probably we kind of want to set up a Storm's Wrath. So let's wait. We can take the point of damage. In order to maximize our Storm's Wrath. Opponent plays a second L State of Life's Bounty. Maxus gains life. Speaker of the Heavens. Perfect. And that's why you keep up the Almond of the Forge. Attempt to kill the Speaker of the Heaven, which will fail. The opponent will protect it. But you only had one mana opened. Which means that this time you can't save it. And you burn, baby, burn da da da. Wow. I guess it's lightning. So you get shocked. Opponent shocked da da da. But then again, it's four damage. It's not two damage. I should probably stop singing. Focus on the game now. So I guess we're going to be playing Kalvori next, as the opponent's playing a flying, first striking puppy. Let's go to Temple of Abandon. Giganta. Giganta's real nice. Lovely Kalvori. God of Kinship. We are missing one land, though. Okay, opponent gets rid of Kalvori. Opponent swings in for a three. But we still have a bit of time. Because we get to cast Giganta. And if we have one land next turn, then we'll get to activate our All Gods combo and wreck the mono white opponent. And I guess it's going to have to happen next turn. I'm not sure it's enough, actually. Opponent's on 27 life. 
That's a lot of life. Alright, we do have a Storm's Rat. So you're going to be tapping for mana. That generates two mana for me. Three, four, five, six, seven. Which only allows me to play Storm's Wrath. And not something else on top of it. So I go the other route. Which is... Hit you with the Elk. Because that's what Elks are best at. First you decide the savior, target the apprentice. No, no, actually we will lose to the second mall, being equipped on the Skyclave Apparition. Unless the opponent doesn't see it. Opponent doesn't see it! Well, live... No, opponent had another land. The opponent trolled us. You're so close! So close to the combo, but we just couldn't quite get there. And flyers are a bit of a problem. We are playing Ghoul God's Tribal on MTG Arena Standard against Age is Magic. Especially if we could turn back time. But we can't, so we're going to move on forward with our World Tree, our Temple of Abandon, and the path to the World Tree. So we have the pat, we have the three, we're just missing the Giganta or enough lands to use it. Perfros, not what we're looking for. Opponents on mono red. Alright, well there's the Giganta, there's the pat. Let's fetch a red source. Doesn't really matter. We're looking the Storm's Rat on 4, Giganta on 5, and then activate World Tree on 6, and sweep Mono Red. As long as the opponent doesn't remove Giganta, this should work like a charm. Like a Boros Charm, because it's going to hit our opponent very hard. So you've drawn Toralf. Which is suboptimal, but it's alright. It's a 5-4 in the matchup. I guess the excess damage clause is quite relevant. Because Monoredge is just playing small creatures. Opponent has a Faceless Haven. Opponent swings. Keep doing only small amount of amounts of damage. At this rate, I won't even need the Storm's Rat on four. Points leaving everything up. All right, we'll go to the backup plan, which is play the five four. Got a fury. Bone Crusher Shock. That's what you've got. I'd rather you do that on Toral than Giganta. Opponent does nothing. All right, you will face the Rat of the or the Fury of the God Cards. Opponent plays a second Fervent Champion. So that was the top deck for the turn. Otherwise, the opponent would have played it last turn. Unless the opponent is playing mono red challenge mode, where you're only allowed to play one creature per turn. It complicates things. Opponent swings. Fervent champion, fervent champion. We don't want to be taken down by Bone Crusher Giant, so we'll block the Fireblade Charger. Rimrock Knight's probably the best thing your opponent could do. Rimrock Knight the Charger, and then the opponent would cast it again. Okay. One removal spell down. We'd like to see that. Again, because as long as we keep Giganta, 
We should be in a winning position. And we have Tired Sanctum. So I think we just run out Giganta. Next turn we have World Tree Activation, which should be lethal. Opponent reads her card. So opponent has a trick, so there's at least one removal spell in their opponent's hand. But Monoret ne needs two to deal with Giganta. And you need to deal with Giganta this turn. Ember Cleave's not enough. Activate Faceless Haven. Opponent would be short red to Ember Cleave. 4 plus 4 is 8. With 1 mana, the only thing our opponent could have is a Rimrock Knight. Actually, there's two options. Either the opponent has a Rimrock Knight, or the opponent has another Frostbite. If the opponent has a Rimrock Knight, and we block any of the, and we don't block, we lose the game. If we block the Faceless Haven, we'll lose Giganta regardless of what our opponent has. Which we don't really want. So do we gamble? So face, blocking the faceless haven is the safe bet. Because that means that we'll live for sure. And the opponent will lose the faceless haven. Whether that's a rimrock knight or a frostbite. But if it is a rimrock knight. And we block a fervent champion. Six. We will win the game. But I'll bet that it's a rimrock knight. Because you cast the bone crusher giant last turn. And then you would have access to two removal spells. If it was a frostbite. Could also be nothing. That is a possibility. I'll base my decision off of the play pattern. And then we activate the world tree! Sacrifice it. Bring out the gods army. Oh, also the opponent could have a bone crusher giant and was hoping to get us down to one or two. Perfros, Kalvori, Clotus, Essica, Jorn Burgi, and Lilia. All activated. 6, 10, 21, 22. They all have Vigilance anyways. They're all Mana Dorks. And we'll get to untap all our snow lands with Jorn. So we will have access to more removal if we need to. Also, you know, Indestructible Gods. They're good. And that's when you scoop opponent in the face of an army of god carrots beaten by a world tree. It would be a, a lot more it would have a lot more of a dramatic effect if we just let the attack resolve instead of letting the timer run weighing the what you're going to bone crush. Yeah, bone crush my face. Bring us down to one. But one is not zero. And minus two is essentially zero in this game. So you lose, and we win. With the World Tree and the Gruul Gods. We are playing Gruul Gods Tribal on MTG Arena Standard against Nako Man. Nako with a C. It's not the Cat Man. Yeah, we're not playing this. 
this is marginally better. Hmm. I think we throw Clot. No, Clotus is good in this matchup. She got us nice, but not right now. I'm going to go with the classic Path to the World Tree Clotus and hope that it's enough. Maybe we can play the horn. Uh, we can play her as Arknail. Fetchy red source. Maybe if we have Harfnail, the Horn of Bounty, we can beat Solta Yorion. Seems unlikely. But it all starts with a Clotus. Horn casts an Almond of the Sea. One up, one down. Feed my Clotus. Or buy that Yorion and discard a card, which will feed the Clotus. We have a bit too many Tired Sanctums. I can play a Ring Hard Grass. That's not what I want. I'm just gonna pass. Alright, here we go. Hearthnail, Horn of Bounty. There's nothing I can't play. I've already made my land follow trigger. So we're playing enchantments, although that thing's an artifact, which is a bit of a liability to Tybalt and the likes. It's still fairly early. If the opponent cannot play anything, like that binding the old gods is uncalled for, that is all our game plan, or at least half our game plan. Well, take that. In which case we'll go Giganta. Please do not deal with Giganta. Which I guess is a hard ask since the opponent has a Yorion in hand. So, no blue sources, please. Because the opponent would get to redo the binding of the old gods. Ugh. Extinction event? Come on, you had the perfect Yorion there. Well, in the meantime, we'll play Kolvori. And pass the turn back. Finding the old gods in the graveyard. Can we get there with just Clotus? Just turn tree Clotus versus Sulta Yorion. Is that good enough? Is that where we've gone? Well. We have an element of the forge, so we'll throw it at our opponent's face. Take the burn! Exile the binding. That thing has caused too much harm. Temple of Abandon. Looking for a world tree now. Definitely not a storm's wrath. One, two, three, four, five, six. We get to activate Clotus here. If this resolves. Which will turn Kulvori into a 6-6. Six, six. Which makes this a lethal attack. Why is everything highlighted? Oh yes, because of Essica's ability. These things, I can give her indestructible.
You will live, Essica. Time to sacrifice the Tyrate Sanctum to make Essica indestructible. Or not. Almost did there for a second. Just a second. <laughs> and now the opponent has taken over and the Emergent Ultimatum has been cast. And our doom has been foretold, even though the opponent's not playing any white sources. There was a second there where we had a lethal attack force, and the opponent only had two eliminates. Ah, cure best the sea gods. Very hard to stop. Alrun's epiphany doesn't do too much. Valky can steal Kalvori, but Valky is not so bad. So, you may have an extra turn, you may have Valky. Not that I'm happy about it. Skaz is playing against Sultai Yorion. An extra turns with Tybalt. One gets Annihilia. Annihilia to annihilate us. We're back to the Clotus plan. Also, if we can draw a world tree, then we'll be able to activate our path to the world tree, and that's another two points of damage. Two points of loss of life, to be more precise. That was not worth it. I don't think. Storm's Rat, Wolf Willow Haven. Yorion. Well, we may have another. Another draw step if you want. With the uh, with Almond of the Sea. One to the top, one to the bottom. I don't like that. Makes all the eliminate. Scouts Scorching Dragon fire on Tybalt. Just so we don't have to face his ultimate next turn. Another Storm's Rat and Binding the Old Gods. Probably targeting the World Tree. Yes. That is a wise decision. Reduces our options. But you still don't have a way to deal with Clotus. That's checking for the Tybalt ultimate that is inevitably coming. When foretells an Alrun's epiphany. So let's carry the Almond of the Forge. See if we can find another one. Improve our clock. It's pretty much the only thing we can do. We do find one. Essica is not helpful. Let's remove the extinction event. Let's attempt to cast the Almond of the Forge. Pass the turn back. You're on four. Even after your emergent ultimatum. Tybalt's not just not doing quite enough because their deck's so awkward in your heads. World Tree Pelucranos. If you do have the the extra churn, which you do, then Pelucranos is gonna be a problem. Because that's a lot of damage. gonna be 12 points of damage next turn then we close this still not quite good enough oh. 
Because we'll drain you for two. And using Clotus, the power of destiny. Seagate restoration could be a huge problem. Three, six, seven. You'd still have five mana open. Draw, draw, draw. It's funny, our opponent has a ton of cards available to play, a much bigger board, a planeswalker ready to ultimate, but because of a life total, this is not over yet. Because the opponent needs to answer Clotus or kill us next turn. Crag the element of the forge. Let's try to dig for a third copy. We do not find it. I'll remove binding the old gods, drain you for two. Vorinclex kills us. Removal on Clotus kills us. Life gain wins the game. But the lack of all any of the above means that we'll win the game on Clotus. Surely you can have no! Erebos' intervention! Let's hope the opponent doesn't see it. Okay, that also works. Warren collects for game. Well, we got close! Clothis, the god of destiny, almost single handedly took down Sultai Orion. But it was just short. Just short! I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe, it won't cost you any mana, and it greatly helps to support this channel and keep the awesome videos coming. Until next time, may the fun be with you.